Welcome back to the Blood and Wine DLC for Witcher 3. Thank you guys so much for joining me again. We're still here in Beauclair because this is where we ended the last episode. And I've decided what I want to do for this episode. Uh, I want to do this uh, Hunger Game quest here where we're supposed to search for Marlena's dowry at the Trastamara estate. That is here on the map. It is uh, right over here. So I'm going to run here to this fast travel point. We'll fast travel to here. We'll go and search for Marlena's dowry. She said that we could have that dowry as thanks for letting her stay at Corvo Bianco. And then after we find this dowry, I'm going to switch over to this uh, treasure hunt here, the Manticore Gear, which is right nearby the Trastamara Estate. So after we pick up the dowry, we'll just run down the hill here, and then we will um, search the, uh, the cave where Lebiota once stayed in, um, in our search for the Manticore gear. So that is what we are going to do in this episode. So let me switch back to the Hunger Game and bring our map up here and highlight this, because that's where we're going to go. And um, yeah, we'll take care of a couple things in this episode before we get back into the main story. And we're not very far away from this fast travel point, so it won't take us long to get to Trastamara Estate at all, which is nice. Alright, back to the hunting cottage. And let's see here. This place is just as spooky as ever. That hasn't changed one bit. Uh, I wonder if there's going to be more uh, enemies that we need to fight in here. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Our uh, Wine Wars Belgard quest has been updated because it has now been uh, three days. So uh, we'll have to remember to go back and see uh, Liam and Matilda, but we're not going to do that right this second. I like that the game reminds you. It doesn't just sit there forever saying, after three days, go back. Okay. So it looks like the dowry might be around the corner here. Look at all these freaking spoons, man. Creepy. Um, hmm. Maybe down in this cellar here. And that's, you know, I'm just now remembering something else. Which quest is that? Is, is it a, or is this the, no, this isn't, no, this is the one, right? Huh. Um, well, we're going to go ahead and go on down here, but this is reminding me that I think there was another place that I didn't visit in here when we last came here. <laughs> Gerald. When we last came here and, um, you know, saved Marlena from being a troll forevermore. She wasn't really a troll. Or is this the cellar I'm thinking of? I don't know, man. So, looking for the dowry here. Not see anything around here. No, this is it. Okay, so this just, uh, I didn't realize there was another way to get here. So remember, we hid in this little cupboard here. And we watched Marlena in her ghoulish form. And at one point, I came out here and I was going to run down these stairs, but uh, she went the other way. But now we're going to, going to actually go down these stairs. So that's kind of cool that we get to come back and see what we missed before. dark down here. There may be an enemy we need to fight down here. Uh, just some ordinary stuff. More spoons I'm going to have to sell off. Yeah, there might be something down here we need to fight. Look at all the spoons, man. Might want to look around some. You might want to look around some, Geralt. Just a thought. Well, I hear something. But it might be something outside. I don't know. Well, um, knock. Full. Okay, so she must have said something about it being in an empty um, cellar or uh, empty a uh, barrel, maybe. Um, yeah, it doesn't mention it here. 
Marlena also told the Witcher that a long time past, her father had amassed for her a dowry that was likely to be lying undisturbed in the cellars of the Trastamara estate. So apparently Geralt just knew to look in these things here. Hmm. Strange. Oh. Oh, okay. Strange. All right. Uh, loot. Gold stick of joy? What? It's a lot of crowns. What the hell is a gold stick of joy? That's awful pretty. It'll look great in the house. Okay. I guess that's it. Quest completed the Hunger Game. <laughs> okay. Well, we found that pretty quickly. Um, let's see here. Will we find the Hunger Game in here? This was a... Was it considered a treasure hunt? Or was it a secondary quest? The Hunger Game, right here. Oh, no new text. Okay, whatever. Well, we got it. We got her dowry. It was pretty substantial. It was a lot of coins. I don't know what the heck a gold stick of joy is, and frankly, I'm afraid to ask. Um, gold stick of joy, Marlena's dowry. Okay. Geralt seemed to... Uh, think that it was something that we could put on display in Corvo Bianco, so next time we're back in Corvo Bianco, we will do exactly that. I mean, come on, of course we're going to display our gold stick of joy. Um, there's a door over here that I'm curious about. So, of course, I'm going to see if I can't open it. Oh, it's locked. Key required? What? Oh, great. That uh, tells me that somewhere, somewhere in this game world exists a key that will open that door. And I'm surprised that I don't have that key. And I'm wondering where this uh, tunnel leads to that I'm seeing on my mini-map. As a matter of fact, it looks like it might end there. So, I wonder if um, this is where we would have gone if I didn't... If I wasn't able to uh, save her, because remember when we first came across her here, um, my first attempt, I chose poorly, and she ran down these stairs, um, and uh, I didn't chase her because I decided to retry that quest. So how do I get out of here? Do I just need to jump up there, maybe? This is pretty neat. I mean, I got the roots from the plants. Up above, coming through the ceiling here. This is really neat. Nice attention to detail. Just always amazes me the amount of detail that the, these people put into games nowadays. And for the most part, you just go running past and you don't really notice the detail. But that, that takes some work. Pretty cool. Alright, I guess I just jump out of here. You can do it, Geralt. I, I believe in you. Alright, well, we uh, got the dowry. Which, like I said, was pretty substantial. So let's get the heck out of here. And, um... We will, uh, go search for the manticore stuff. Not that I'm gonna wear the manticore gear. I just want to collect it all. You know, I like to collect things. How do we get out of here? Um, oh, okay, I go this way, I think. Yeah, here we go. Alright, let's get the heck out of this creepy place. And we'll switch our quest to this treasure hunt, the manticore gear. And I guess it's taking me down a path. That's fine, we'll follow the path. Get the heck out of this place, man. I don't like it here. It is creepy. Feel like there's a pack of wolves nearby, but I, I think we've heard that every time we've come here. Wolves howling in the distance. Uh, there's an enemy right down there. There's a couple of them. A foglet. Hmm. I don't want to fight foglets. Uh, hold on a second. Okay. 
Um, all right. Hey, what's up? Lay down an eared, and I think will ear didn't make them appear. Okay, one foglet down. Apparently, he hit me. Apparently, he got a hit off on me. And I didn't bother to even put the correct oil on my sword because I just want to fight these things and get it over with. Okay. Heal ourselves up. Loot these losers. And uh, I'm going to do a meditate here real quick because you know I don't like to run around at nighttime. I'm scared of the dark. That's actually not the reason I always meditate till morning. I meditate because I like to see what the heck I'm doing. It's still dark here in these woods, but that's okay. Alright. Ah, it's still foggy here. Another enemy to my left that I'm just going to run past. Not interested. Oh, there's some up in front of me too. This place is dangerous, man. What, Bargusts? Yep. Ouch. Screw you, Bargusts. Come on, step into my circle of death. Ooh, there's more stuff coming from this direction, it looks like. Oh, sure enough, here comes another one. Come here. At least they're easy to kill. Hey, what's up? Come here. Okay, he's dead. Alright, enough with the Bargusts already. I got enough work to do. I don't need to be fighting Bargusts. Alright. Oh, still another one here. Okay. Thanks for all your Bargust juice or whatever. Alright, pick up the pace, girl. Is that something here? See, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Like, these developers went to the trouble of putting this tree here, putting all these rocks at the base of the tree. And I mean, all these trees for that matter. And does anybody really stop to look at them? No, not really. You just kind of run past. I mean, I appreciate the effort. Absolutely. It really makes the world feel alive. Boy, look at look at to the left. There's a bunch of stuff up the hill there. Ah, crap. This thing's taking me in that direction. Man, there are tons of enemies around this place. They're just all over my mini-map. Is this thing taking me where I want to go? It sure seems like it's taking me on a roundabout path. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I get for following the dotted line. I, I could have just run straight down here. But instead, it's like... Google Maps here, making me take the path. Anyway, whatever. Let's take it. I guess it's Beauclair off in the distance there, huh? Oh, a panther. Come here, panther. Come here. Come on. Oh, you're, you're slimy. Slippery is the word I meant to use, not slimy. Is he dead? Here comes another one. You killed my brother! <laughs> panther didn't have a chance. <laughs> that panther is like having second thoughts. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me out of here. But Gerald wouldn't let him leave. Gotta get a raw meat and cured leather. What is it? Is it panther leather? Can you make leather from panther skin? I don't know. New marker entrance. Okay, here we are. We're at the cave where Lebiota once stayed. So, here's the story about the manticore gear. Only once in his life, Geralt ever seen... Oh, I missed the word had. Only once in his life had Geralt ever seen armor made from diagrams hailing from the school of the manticore. What's more, said suit had been incomplete and truth be told, the worse for wear. So when the opportunity arose to assemble Manticore gear, and at a Grandmaster level to boot, the Witcher did not hesitate a moment before setting off in search of what was required. Well, actually, he hesitated quite a bit because we've waited a little bit of time before doing this quest, but hey, whatever. The cave Merton mentioned. Need to look around. The cave Merton mentioned. Okay. 
find the place Merton traveled to. Gotta pick up my mushrooms and my nostrisks. Nostrix, you never know when you're gonna need it. Okay, we are going down into the super dark cave. Get out our torch, why not? Boy, it really makes the place look different, doesn't it? Search the chamber. Slips of paper all over. Prayer on each one. Maybe Merton left one too. Slips of paper all over, says Geralt. Florins. Examine. Remember to seek moderation in all things, in drink and vittles, in the pleasures of the flesh, for whosoever shall abuse these pleasures shall awake the next morn in great pain with a pounding head and a wilted member. <laughs> Alright. And a story to tell, apparently. Okay, got some cool stuff here. Do not unto thy neighbor what thou thyself deemest unpleasant, unless thy neighbor hath done thee sorely wrong, and rife with vileness were his deeds. So, don't do unto others which you would not have done unto yourself unless they deserve it. Okay. Uh, here's some slips of paper that Geralt mentioned. We'll get to those. Gonna do a little bit more looting before we go to that. Thou shalt always speak the truth, unless the truth is not well served by being spoken, in which case thou shalt lie. Okay. Got some more papers over here. Oh man, I wanted some more uh, tidbits of wisdom from Lebiota. And let's see, have we read this one already? Verily I say unto you, give alms to the poor, yet deposit not a whole watermelon upon a beggar's lap, but merely half, lest the beggar's joy strike him with apoplexy. Okay. All right, so we've uh, made the rounds in this room. We've gone all the way around it. Oh, neat. So let us uh, now look at these little red slips of paper. Please bless mummy with good health, great Lebiota. Make her well and make her never get so awful pissed again, Antoinette. <laughs> okay. Oh, great Lebiota. Make my fields yield bounties and save them from floods and drought. But only my fields, mind you. My neighbor has had enough luck of late. Guest on. Okay, we read those two. Move over to the next set. Well, there's three of them here. Let me be beautiful, shapely, alluring, and always youthful. And may Lysenol on that strumpet Maria's fat hiney. Babette. <laughs> Good grief. Okay, next... Text smeared. Already asked Melatelli. I've been to the Druids and nothing. So maybe you, great Lebiota, will hear my prayer. I want to be old, ugly, and fat, for I'm sick and tired of staring at all these fair folk. They, they're as dull as ditch water. I, at least, aspire to be interesting. Quentin, okay. And then there's another one here. Oh, there's a loot. Loot. Merton's Prayer. Let us read it. Seven Fane 1203. Bless me with strength that I may never falter. Bless me with grace that I may never doubt. Bless me with fortitude of spirit that I may leave behind the old and embrace the new with courage. I, Merton, a member of the Guild of Witchers named after the Manticore, begin this day my pilgrimage. Here in the very cave where for three and twenty days and three and twenty nights Lebiota fasted and meditated. I vow to atone for my sins, to walk the path of redemption and rid myself of all that ties me to my old life, so that I may stand proudly among the disciples of the highest and proclaim myself a new man. I shall thus now journey to the temple of Lebiota to meet with the great beggar, a sage who has pondered the pearls of Lebiota more than any else. In this sad veil of tears, I shall listen to his counsel and follow his guidance on my road to absolution. There we are. Burton wrote a prayer on the back of the diagram. Seems he left the prison, came here, then went to the temple. Okay, we are now to go to Leviota's temple. I think there's a few more uh, prayers to read here. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and read them because they're kind of funny. 
text smeared, and may Jean-Luc be struck down and his bowels devoured by cholera, for he is a lecher and harlot's brood like few others. Bastion. Ugh, what a horrible thing to wish on someone. And then there's one more here. Lebiota, blessed be thy name. Please let my son my son Julian reach Kovir safely. Let him find a little lady at last, one well born and with ample tracts of land, Pascal. Okay, I think that's all of the um, prayers in here for us to uh, snoop on. So let's get out of this place. So we're supposed to go to Lebiota's temple. Uh, let's get out of here and we'll look on our map and see where this temple is. It's probably not nearby. Yeah, it's not. So Lebiota's temple <laughs> is way up here, which makes sense. It's near the statue. That's cool. Well, um, that will do that for this part of the world. There, there is still more uh, gear to be found. The Griffin gear, which is, um, well, it's not, it's not close by. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's any quests nearby us here. Don't take candy from a stranger. That one I don't think is nearby. I looked at it earlier. No, it's not nearby. Uh, spontaneous Profits. We're supposed to find this studio. That studio is also far away. And then we have this one. That is not nearby. And we got this one here that I don't even remember. Level 48 quest, which is what we are. It makes me nervous. This one isn't too far away. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, uh, let's hop on Roach and uh, right here. We'll check this place out. And then maybe we'll come back down around and go here. And then maybe we'll come up here and do this one. Or maybe we'll just go to these other question marks. I don't know. Uh, so here's where I want to go. So I'll put my marker here. We'll call Roach... Where Roach showed up, I don't know. There's Roach behind us, and he's up above us. Oh, Geralt. Got a spring in his step. There's Roach. Oh, what? Roach, I'm right here. Roach. Oh my gosh. Roach. Alright, let's go for a ride, Roach. Try not to run into a tree. What's this little place? Have we been here? Come on now. Um, new marker, Gelenzer Farm. Okay, I'm going to say no, we have not been here. Gelenzer, Gelenzer, Gelenzer. I'm going with Gelenzer. Old man Gelenzer grew radishes. Yes, radishes. Not grapes, not olives, not even beets. As he himself put it, Dad gummit, I can't very well live on bread and wine alone, now can I? Old Man Gelenser did not found a radish empire. The history of his line is not filled with amazing legends. He lived, sired children, planted radishes, and died. O oh, Lebiota, give us all such a calm and simple life. Well, let's explore this little farm here. Just take a look at it. I mean, it's got a marker. So there's got to be something important here, right? Okay, there's somebody there. Well, I guess somebody's still living here, maybe. Hey, how you doing? You, what do you want? Uh, I'm just stopping by to say hi. That's all. Um, loot. Ah. Well. Gonna take these. Learn a little bit about the uh, noble houses of Toussaint. Uh, we already read this one because I remember the Sangreal thing. And we picked up something else too but unfortunately this thing doesn't bother to put them in any kind of order that makes sense um, it was about Alps so what if I go through all of these and make them no longer new oh here we go Alps Bruxelles dangerous cousins 
In the course of my research into Bruxay, I have stumbled upon certain inconsistencies that in no way correspond with what we already know about these dangerous vampires. My investigations have revealed that these seemingly erroneous accounts were in fact describing an Alp, not a Bruxa. It is an extraordinary discovery, a true milestone in the classification of these monsters. I remember fighting Alps in the first game. I fought them in a cave. Even though legends tell of these vampires turning into pitch black hounds or venomous toads, personally I do not believe an Alp is capable of such polymorphy. However, it is almost certain that similarly <laughs> similarly to a Bruxa, an Alp may transform itself into a beautiful woman. This ability allows the species to blend seamlessly into crowds. To think that I may have passed such a monster completely unaware is fascinating. One of the fundamental differences between Alps and Bruxae is their fighting style. When in the form of a vampire, Alps also possess the ability to turn into fog, which allow them to move noiselessly and attack by surprise. Most likely, this is the root of the name common folk have given them, Fleetlings. Nido. Okay. So that's why we loot. That's why we loot, because we find interesting stuff like that. And now we will have amp amps, Alps in our bestiary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Looked like a Bruxa, but that was no Bruxa. Fragment of a conversation between the Elderman of Falcone and a Witcher. Alps are vampires that resemble Bruxae in appearance. They are called phantoms by some, a name which fits well enough. For like phantoms, they haunt and torment men. They usually take on the form of a woman, though they can also appear as animals. They are most often found prowling near villages. They attack at night and are most active when the moon is full. Alp saliva can make one fall asleep, and when applied to a sleeping man, can invoke horrible nightmares. Some suggest they are the cause of legends about men who go to sleep healthy and are found in the morning white as snow, not a drop of blood in their veins. In combat, Alps display supernatural speed and incredible, even by vampire standards, stamina. One must aim one sword with great precision, for Alps are unequaled in the art of evading blows. The Eerden sign is recommended, for it weakens an Alps defenses. Another strategy is to drink the black blood potion, for Alps suck the blood of their victims to deprive them of strength and regenerate their own powers. Unlike Bruxae, Alps cannot turn invisible, yet like Bruxae, they emit a shrieking noise whose shockwave can incapacitate. Their greatest asset is their agility, and they can leap with uncanny lightness that appears to border on the power of flight. When in human form, they easily blend in with the surrounding community, which makes them very dangerous indeed. So they're vulnerable against moon dust, vampire oil, black blood potion, and Eerden. And now we know all about Alps. So we're going to keep searching this place. Just to see if there's any more goodies around here. Maybe we'll find a quest. And maybe we'll find nothing. Nothing else, I should say. We already found the Alps book, which was pretty cool. So why does this place have a marker on the map? Why is it important? Let's see, here's something to loot. Um, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take everything. Oh, look at this, more books. Huh. The last basilisk of its kind, a study in ecology by Borghi de Salvares and Kiki Moore's Truths and Myths about the insidious insectoids. Oh, we found ourselves a library here in the middle of nowhere. The Last Basilisk. Based on my observations, I have concluded all species, be they plant, animal, or even insect, are inextricably intertwined with one another. It is no mere coincidence the felling of the beech woods and the vanishing of the rose who in them once dwelled led to the disappearance of the sterling basilisks as well. Wow, that sentence made no sense to me at all. The principle even holds true for ladybirds. For the betterment of learning, I conducted the following experiment. I eradicated all the aphids in the palace cabbage patch using a lye solution. Within a few weeks, all of the ladybirds, once present in that patch, and there were hundreds, migrated to a neighboring field. A simple experiment, yet it gave incontrovert incontrovertible proof of my hypothesis. Okay. Uh, so now we have a bestiary ent entered. 
Uh, Kikimors, Truths and Myths About the Insidious Insectoids. Observation has shown that Kikimors are the most organized and hierarch hierarchical of the post-conjunction insectoids. Their workers follow the orders of warriors. They are all subjects of the queen, which seems to control the behavior of all members of the swarm, even though she remains hidden deep in the ground. Yeah, I don't think we've seen a Kikimor queen. Considering the small size of this species' cerebral ganglia, which functions as a brain, one may hypothesize that Kikimors possess a sort of hive mind, making them similar to ants. So what was this new uh, bestiary entry we got? Was it for Kikimors or was it for uh, basilisks? Um, I don't remember... Um, let's see, basilisks... I think we read that one already? You would think, though, that we would have already had an entry on Kikimors. Huh, I was wondering if it gave us an entry on the Kikimor Queen since we read about it, but I guess not. Oh, well. What else is here? Any more books to read? Boy, there sure are. <laughs> Jeez. The Elder Blood. Uh, who exactly is the Elder Blood? According to some, it is a powerful elven curse passed from generation to generation. Those in whose veins the infamous hen eye care flows are said to carry death and destruction within them, to sow hatred and disdain in the hearts of men. It was from this contaminated blood that Ithlin prophesied an avenger would be born, a destroyer of nations and worlds. Others claim the elder blood is an extremely rare inherited talent, granting control over time and space to a degree unattainable even to elven sages. Sadly, a few bearers of this gift have been able to control it in full. This merely partial mastery inevitably leads to sudden outbursts of the power that take the form of unpredictable, uncontrollable, and thus extremely dangerous explosions. Behind the dark legends about the curse of the Elder Blood lies the truth of these tragic cases. For obvious reasons, the bearer of the Elder Blood were always subjects of great interest to the world's mighty and to mages alike. The former counted on the truth of Ithlin's prophecy, on an avenger being born who could destroy worlds, and who they could thus use for their purposes. As for the latter, they hoped to harness the magic of Hen I Care to broaden their own knowledge and powers. Ultimately, however, all these plans were for naught. The Elder Bloodline broke off with the disappearance of the heiress of the Nilf uh, to the Nilfgaardian crown, Cirilla, Fiona, Eldon, and Rhiannon. We know, we know Siri. And then we have another book here that gives us a bestiary entry for some reason. Forgotten Species, the Proto-Fletter. Huh. If you take a fletter and magnify all of its most primitive traits, you will get a Proto-Fletter. This beast, the fletter's distant ancestor, arrived here from a parallel sphere centuries past, yet unlike the fletter, has remained untouched by any post-conjunction evolutionary processes. In our time, Proto-Fletters are extremely rare, the more suitably adapted flutters having taken over their niche in our biosphere. proto flutters are thus lesser vampires. Their massive, wide jaws constitute their main weapons, their sharp claws coming in a close second. Similarly to their more developed cousins, proto flutters rely on their instincts rather than intelligence and are quite sensitive to the scent of blood. All the usual means of fighting vampires, such as vampire oil, black blood, and silver weapons apply to them as well. Well, this place has all kinds of stuff. Proto Fletters. Never seen a vampire like that in my life. Geralt of Rivia Witcher. Proto Fletters are relatives of Fletters, which came from the world of the higher vampires to our own during the conjunction of the spheres. The members of this species are characterized by their considerable strength and agility, as well as the strange glow they emit, a trait most likely tied to their otherworldly nature. proto fletters have never had significant contact with the outside world, having spent their entire time on our planet in the Unseen Elder's Cave, whose atmosphere is very similar to that of their homeworld, and they're vulnerable against vampire oil and black blood. Okay. Ooh, all kinds of stuff in here. Boy, we're glad we stopped by, huh? 
hope this peasant doesn't mind that we just stole other books. Alright. Uh, anything outside that we could also uh, help ourselves to? Okay. Nothing in this little shack. Alright. There's extra room here. Hey, what's up, little girl? <laughs> you need something? Uh no, I took what I needed, thank you. I got what I wanted. I've lots to do before it gets dark. Yeah, you better get moving, bud. Uh over here is a uh thing. The Prophet Lebiota, King of the Universe. All Toussaint constructs his monument. Do not stand idle. Do not tarry. What should you do? Build. Love thy neighbor. Yet be thou not overmuch affectionate in thy love. For thy neighbor might take this wrongly. Pearls of Wisdom from the Prophet. Alright. Well, Roach. Oh, whoa. What's up, Mr. Cat? That cat does not like Geralt's. All right, let us uh, resume our uh, trek here to this marker. Okay, all right. Okay, all right, let's go. Come on. So there's a cave here, but I think, I think we've already visited. I think we've already gone in this cave. Yeah, this was uh, the location of a vintner's uh, contract, so we've already been there. I guess we'll go ahead and ride down the hill here. I mean, riding Roach is a good way to get around quickly. I just wish it wasn't so frustrating to ride him. Hey, what's up? I have a horse too. So, let's go check this place out. What is this place? Crane Isle Whoa. in the Sands Retour Marsh. New marker to Sant Prison. Hmm. It is hard to believe Toussaint, now so vibrant and full of life, once fell victim to a leprosy epidemic. To isolate the infected from the healthy, by ducal decree a leper colony was created on Crane Island. When all the colony's inhabitants died, the complex gradually fell into ruin, and the decision was made to adapt it into a prison, which it remains to this day. Really now? Huh. Interesting. Well, I guess we'll dismount here. Anything interesting over here? Not really. Are we going to be able to get into this prison? I don't know. Let's see. Hey guys, what's up? We'll teach you discipline. Whoa, hey now, I didn't do anything wrong. Well, we're not getting in that way. So where's this question mark on our map? It's over here. So maybe we could skirt around the side of this place. How far down is this? Ah, eh, we're good. Let's go down there. Enjoy the view here for a moment. Clouds going by. Very nicely done. My gosh. These guys really know what they're doing. Sheesh. Can't wait to see what they do next. Uh, well, we found a hidden treasure. Which, according to my mini-map, is above us here. Let's see what's guarding it. New marker entrance. Ooh, there's an underwater cave over here. Hmm, very interesting. 
All right, I guess we're going to go into this cave. If I could find it. Ah, here we go. It's a hole. All right, let's get our breath here. Oh, I don't even let myself get my own breath. There we go. Here we go. It is super dark. I found a pickaxe. A skull. And a diamond ring. A key. Okay. Well, there's a lot of stuff down here. Uh, let's take our whale potion so we could breathe longer down here. Um, <laughs> I gotta look through all these things. Oh, wow, found it quickly. Killer whale increases breath supply while, under while underwater by 50% and improves vision. Um, so we found a key. So, what are we going to do with the key? I got to get out of here, man. Come on, girl. Pick up the pace, buddy. Come on. Oh. Okay, so we found a key. Was there a chest up here that I missed? Because the uh, our mini-map is showing that the treasure is actually actually above us here. Oh, wait a minute. There's something. Loot. Well, that ain't it. Okay, still not what we're looking for. Should be right around here. Aha! Found it! Escape Artist's Journal. <laughs> Part of the journal is sticky with dried blood. 22nd day of the month of Burke. The worst part of my works, not that I have to crawl through cesspits, jump from great heights, dive into canals, be tied up, untied, lashed, burnt, tortured, have my fingernails ripped out or scraped off while digging tunnels barehanded. No, none of that's the worst. The worst is that I've got to document it all, then hide the notes from the guards. Each escape must be noted down in detail. Otherwise, my employers won't have a basis for releasing my pay. The work of a professional escapologist is not easy, my friend. 25th day of the month of Burke. This time I was given a contract in Toussaint. This is going to be a piece of cake. The guards are fat and drowsy and the walls pocked. Illegible fragment. I was given a thorough hiding today. Those guards are fat and indolent, true, but they know how to whip. Blast, I think I'm getting too old for this. I'll finish this contract and then it's time for a change of trades. 28th day of the month of Burke. Ha! I am one lucky horson. My fellow inmate, a man wrongfully convicted, told me a story about an elven treasure trove hidden underwater somewhere south of the prison. I believe he sensed I was planning an escape. I'm supposed to... Uh, I'm supposed to take that sly rogue with me in exchange for the key. Perhaps that's my ticket to an early retirement. First day of the month of Blathe. I completed my dig only to learn I had miscalculated and exited right into the lake. My companion had not learned to swim, it seems, and now he never will, for he sleeps the big sleep dreaming of fish. Sadly, I didn't manage to take the key to the elven treasure from him. Took all my strength just to get back to our cell, where a pack of guards were waiting for me. They knocked out a few of my ribs and a handful of teeth, but I should heal. Who's going to grow his teeth back? Eleventh day of the month of Blathe. Things are good. They've moved me to another cell. Bars on the window saw the days when elves ran to Sant, so I'll loosen those rust-rotten rods this evening, and then it's into the lake. It's a long drop, true, but that's no worry for me. Then I'll report back to my employer and check out that tale about a treasure. If all goes well, I'll soon be done with escapology. So I don't know if we found this guy's body or not. New quest applied escapology. 
Wandering around outside the prison, Geralt came upon a desiccated human skeleton. The bones he found on the remains proved interesting. Okay, well, maybe there was a skeleton lying here. Strong winds whirled around Crane Isle at all times, so the bones the Witcher found were bleached, polished clean. They had belonged to a specialist in escapology. This professional's métier, what? had been to test the invulnerability of penitentiaries to flight by their inmates. He had performed this service around the world, time and again letting himself be imprisoned, then striving to escape. It seemed this had been his last attempt, yet in the notes he had last compiled, he had also made mention of a sunken elven vault. It was said to lie somewhere in the water near the prison. Needless to say, the Witcher was interested. Find the sunken ruins and the elven treasure. It is over here. That would be uh, quite a swim. So let us uh, see if we can't get to this boat here. Actually, how am I going to get back up here? Eh. Let's see, how far away is it? 252? That's not too far. You guys ready to go for a swim? Let's go. We're going to go swim over here. We're going to find the sunken ruins and the elven treasure. And it is a lovely day for a swim, so let's just uh, enjoy ourselves. There's a boat and a little shack over there to the right. I don't know if we've been there yet or not. So the old escapologist... I guess, technically, he escaped the prison, but not with his life, sadly, for him. Good news for Geralt, though. I'm going to find a sunken treasure. Uh, there's some uh, drowners or something off to there to the left. See them? Okay. So there's a cave here. Neat! Whoa, how cool is this? Cool. Let's uh, find this treasure. Holy cow, how deep does this go? Oh my gosh. Come on now, loot him. A gold ring. Oh my gosh. Okay, good. There's. We can climb up in here. Um, what's this? Big pile of crowns. Grounds. Here's what we came here for. Alright. That's it. And that completes that quest. Come on, swim up, Geralt. You need some air. Okay. Neato, cool, cool, neato. Get our breath back. Some more stuff here on the floor of this cave. More crowns. Boy, Geralt really hit the jackpot here, didn't he? What is that little marker? I guess there's a little hole in the in the rocks there. All right, cool. Let's get out of here. Looks like my whale potion is worn off. Oh crap! Come on, go up, Geralt. Come on, up, up. Geralt, what are you doing? Go up, man. Oh crap! I don't know what the hell Geralt's doing here, but he's not doing what I'm telling him to do, and I'm gonna die because of it. Let me go back here. Alright. Get your breath back, Geralt. And dive. And swim. Around this pole. Let's see if this will work. Alright. Out the door. It's pretty neat. Swim to the top. Okay. Fantastic. Oh, there's a bear over here. So, that quest was called uh, something like Escapology or something. 
see if I can find it real quick. Um, those are contracts. And then these here are the, uh, these are the treasure hunts. So I'm just wondering if I can, here it is, apply to Scapology. Geralt located the sunken ruins and the elven riches hidden within them. He collected the latter and promptly set off in search of new adventures, content to be suddenly much better off. Yeah, we're doing pretty good in the money. In the money here. Okay. Um, there's a bear. Little, little shack over here that I don't know if I've visited before. I'm just curious. Let's see if we can avoid this bear. Oh, okay. All right, bear. I really don't want to fight you. I don't want to kill you, you know. I will kill you. Hey, buddy, what's up? Look at this little place. A fisherman. Did chasing down witches make you go gray? Uh, sure. Look at this cute little place. It's adorable. Ah, smart man. Keeps his door locked. He's like, here comes the witcher. Lock the door. All right, just a little shack out here. Sorry, I've this runny nose. It's okay. Can we loot this? I work up to my chin and I've caught some rot. <laughs> All right, well, that is where this episode is going to end. Uh, when we come back next time, uh, let's see. We will probably go over here and then up here to this question mark. Maybe. Or maybe I'll change my mind. I don't know, man. Come back next time to find out. Thanks for joining me on this play session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why don't you let me know by leaving a like or a comment. Thank you so much to those of you who do take the time to press the like button. And those of you who leave me comments. I really do appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Hope you join me in the next episode.